So by now you've learned how to use regular trigonometry, the primary three trig ratios when we have a 90 degree triangle. And then we've learned the sine law, which works well when we have an angle and an opposite side. But if we look at this particular question here, um, we can't use the three primary trig ratios because it's not a 90 degree triangle. And we can't use the sine law because we have this angle, but we don't have the opposite side. And we have these two sides, but there's no way of finding their opposite angles because we only know one angle in the triangle. So we're going to look at something that's called the cosine law that'll help us when we know two sides and the angle that's in between them. So I've got a triangle here, and I've labeled the sides A, B, and C corresponding to their angles. And we're going to do the same thing we did with the sine law. We're going to drop a perpendicular down here, sort of like that, and we'll call that H. <clears throat> now, it turns out that the cosine law is related to Pythagoras' theorem. So we're going to look at this triangle here. And this whole thing is B. I'm going to call this little segment from here to here X. So let's let this be X. And if this whole length is B and this part of it is X, then this little part here would be B minus X. And let's, let's develop the cosine ratio of angle C. So if I took the cosine of angle C, that would be X over A. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at Pythagoras' theorem in this right triangle. Remember in Pythagoras' theorem it's h squared plus x squared equals a squared. So this side squared, short side squared plus short side squared equals hypotenuse squared. In this part of the triangle we can also use Pythagoras' theorem. So c squared would equal h squared plus b minus x all squared. So this squared plus this squared equals this squared. And I'm going to I'm going to multiply this out. Remember b minus x squared means b minus x times b minus x. So this is going to become b squared b times b b times minus x would be minus xb. And then minus x times b is a mi another minus xb and minus x times minus x is positive x squared. So we get b squared minus 2xb's plus x squared. So this is what we would get with Pythagoras' theorem on this side. Now we're going to work with this equation, but what we're going to try to do is write all of this Pythagorean relationship in terms of a, b, and c, because h and x were just parts of the triangle that we arbitrarily um, chose to represent the height and and part of the side of the triangle. So do we have, we want to get rid of h. Do we have a relationship with h squared? Yes we do, right here. So up here you can see that h squared would be a squared minus x squared. If We brought that to the other side. So let's replace the h squared with a squared minus x squared. B is fine, because that's one side of our triangle. In here there's an X, and we don't want X. We want everything A, B, and C. So X, here's a relationship that's going to get rid of X. X would be, if we multiplied everything by A, it would be A cosine C. And then there's the B. So this part here was the x, x was a cosine c, b plus x squared. Now we don't want to write x squared either, but if you look at the formula here, it's the x squares are going to nicely cancel out. We have a minus x squared plus an x squared. So those are going to go, and we get c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus, now we have 2a cos c b, 
why don't we write the A and the B together? And we have developed right here what we call the cosine law. So the cosine law says if you want to find a side, if you want to find a side like C, C squared, this side squared, equals the other two sides squared, A squared plus B squared, minus 2 times A times B, times the cosine of angle C, which would be this angle down here. So this is how we can develop the cosine law, and we will now use this cosine law to find parts of the triangle. So here's the cosine law again. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cos C. And I've set a triangle up here where we've got to find little side C. And we know A, and, sorry, we know A, we know B, and we know angle C. So if we want to find side C, C squared would equal A squared. So A side A would be 10. It's the side opposite angle A. B would be 9, it's the side opposite angle B. And again, A is 10, B is 9, cosine of angle C, which is 50 degrees. And so it becomes a calculator question. So 10 squared plus 9 squared minus 2 times 10 times 9 times the cosine of the angle in between them whoops gives 65.298 so 65.3 now that's not C remember that's still C squared so if we want to get C we need to our final step will be to square root that answer and it's best to have all your decimals when you're doing your square root. So I'm going to go the square root and then the answer button. So I'll put all those decimals in. And now we can round to two decimal places. We'll say 8.08 .08 would be the length of side C. Now with the cosine law, C squared equals A squared plus B squared and so on. If you're trying to find side B, say, well, then the law will just become b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine of b. And if you're trying to find a, well, then a squared will go here, and the other two variables will go here. And so this angle here these two are always related. And so really you can say that the cosine law is if you want to find a side, it's the side you're trying to find squared equals the other two sides squared added together minus two times those sides times the cosine of the angle that's, that's in between them. So if you're looking at the formula here, c squared equals a squared plus B squared minus 2 times A and B times the cosine of the angle in between those those two values that you're trying to find. We'll look at another example here. So let's say we wanted to find side length B here. So B squared would equal A squared plus C squared minus 2 times A times C times that cosine of the angle that's in between them, which will be B. So we use the cosine law when we know two sides and the angle in between them. So we know these two sides and angle in between. So anytime you see that, when you have two sides that you know and you're trying to find the angle in between, then this will be a cosine question. And we're trying to find this side over here. So b squared equals a squared, which would be 4 squared plus c squared 
minus 2 times a times c times the cosine of the angle in between them. Let's do some calculator work here. So we got 4 squared plus 7 squared minus 2 times 4 times 7 times the cosine of 105 is 79.49. And we would need, to, that's b squared, so we need to square root both sides to get b. And we get 8.92 as our length for side B. Now let me show you one other example here where we can also use the cosine law to find angles. So in this one here, let's, um, let's say we got to find this angle here. Let's label that angle A, B, C. So we have all the sides in the triangle but we need to find an angle. So we can't use the sine law because we have no opposite pairs. But the cosine law will actually work here. So we have the formula a squared equals b squared uh, plus c squared minus 2bc cosine of angle a. So we're trying to find angle a. So this is the, the one that we would use here. And since we have all of a, b, and c, this would be the only unknown once we substitute everything in. So if we're going to find angle A, the opposite side of angle A is little a, which is 6, and little b is 11, little c is 13. And so now we, got to, we do have to do a little bit of algebra here to isolate A, but, but we can do it. Let's do all the squaring here. So 6 squared is 36. 11 squared is 121, 13 squared is 169, so 121 plus 169 is 290, then at this step here, a lot of students make this mistake. They'll go 290 and they'll just go minus 2 times 11 times 13 and get a number there, but you can't subtract those because those are attached to cosine a by, by multiplication. So if we're trying to isolate a, we need to subtract 290 from both sides. Gone, gone. 36 minus 290 minus 254 Why don't we do this multiplying together here? So let's go 2 times 11 times 13. We could multiply those together. 286 So multiply these together we get negative 286. Now we're going to isolate A so this is divide by 286 to get rid of that. So negative 254 divided by negative 286 is negative 0.888, no positive 0.888. And now of course we're finding the angles, so we're going to take the inverse cosine of both sides. So shift cosine of that answer and we get an angle of 27.36 36 degrees so we use cosine law in two situations if we know all the sides and we're trying to find an angle like in this example or like in the other example if we know two sides and the angle in between then we can find find the opposite side So the cosine law states that c squared, if you want to find this side here, this side squared will equal the other two sides squared added together 
minus 2 times a times b times the cosine of that angle that's in between those two sides. And similar formulas work for the other two sides if those are the ones that you're, you're trying to find. The cosine law, if we know two sides and the angle that's in between them, or if we knew all three sides in the triangle and we were asked to find an angle. So that's the cosine law and how we use it to find parts of triangles.